the changing role of CEOs and their relationship with their boards. Complex and rapid changes are reshaping the world of business and the role of the CEO. A recent study involving almost a thousand CEOs that represent organizations with revenues of 3.7 trillion in 2020 captures the pulse on how CEO roles and expectations are evolving. One finding stood out for me. Less than half of CEOs report that they feel fully aligned with their teams and even fewer with their boards. What is going on here? I'm delighted to kick off the Better Boards podcast series 2022 with Dr. Kati Naipur Schütte. Kati leads Egon Sender's global CEO practice and is also deeply involved in the firm's board consulting practice. Welcome to the Better Boards podcast series. I'm Dr. Sabine Demkowski, founder and managing partner of Better Boards. We make the boards of the most ambitious organizations more effective. Our mission at Better Boards is to contribute to creating better boards. We do this by providing clients with an evidence-based approach for board evaluations and board development programs. To fulfill our mission, we give a voice to all who care about creating better boards. Kati, thank you so much for contributing to the Better Boards podcast series. Thank you for inviting me and my pleasure. You recently published a massive study involving almost a thousand CEOs representing organizations that had combined revenues of 3.7 trillion in 2020. You've done similar exercises in the past, although not on such a scale. Mm -hmm. What are the findings that really stand out for you? Yes, Sabine, this study in 2018 was also quite exciting. It already gave us a clear indication how the CEO's role is changing and how the CEOs are basically seeing that and responding to it by adopting a growth mindset. And that made us very curious to learn more and do more research. And we did. And we decided to ask the CEOs, do do we see it right? Or what else can they add to that? And how do they see it? And it was quite exciting that, first of all, so many of them came back and told us so much, so honestly, Truly, it was really a pleasure to see that. It uh, really showed again the CEOs are sometimes lonely and they had the urge to share with each other, basically, right? This was amongst peers, group CEOs only. And it was the biggest thing, I think, first of all, that it is that way while a CEO role has always been a special role. That is nothing new. But times really have changed. It actually has started the change and transformation started some many, many years ago. But I think particularly, obviously, the last two years that has made it much more of a higher speed and acceleration of change, but highly complex, very uncertain. And this has not only obviously reshaped the businesses, the entire, all of us, society and and countries, but also uh, the CEO's role, therefore. So one of the biggest things was that about 90% of these CEOs clearly approved that their role has, they, they have moved to the center of much louder, more diverse and diverging voices. Stakeholders have different priorities. And uh, this has obviously means for them much faster decision-making and that without really knowing how things will evolve. Uh, the other big thing that really basically not only confirmed, but just uh, dramatically increased the trend of the fact that what we call the dual journey, so transforming businesses, CEOs came back and said, I need to transform with it. It's me. It's, and that it, really came from them. It came from them. It's an amazing. So this number of people who agreed that, uh, strongly agreed that I need to transform myself and my business at the same time. So the dual journey, this number tripled, right? The strongly agreed tripled. And almost 100%, so 97% either strongly agree or agree that uh, they need to do this, which means it starts with CEOs. That's, by the way, the, why the, the study is called It Starts with the CEOs, right? Do they point specifically to issues, how they think they need to transform themselves? Yes, they see that what is really interesting is that they see the, is how essential it is to reflect their, on their own leadership style. That number also increased dramatically from study and 
we sent that same question in uh, 2018 from 66% agreeing that it's essential to reflect on their leadership style to 83%, meaning they see it, it is my leadership that will make this change happen, right? And to do that, we kept on asking them questions about how they connect with their stakeholders, how they, uh, what are things that they find challenging now? How do they b- change their businesses? What are their priorities? And it is clear that they see the, the three major, if you will, leadership, what we call leadership capacities. It's almost like an operating system in a, in a person. The three major leadership capacities are needed in order to make this personal change happen. It starts with self-awareness, doesn't it? And what do they find most challenging? The most challenging thing and uh, what actually they receive that feedback is, <laughs> crazy enough, relational capabilities. And that's the point that really struck me about this study. I was really, really surprised, uh, I have to tell you, about that finding. That half, just a, a little bit less than half of the CEOs reported that they feel fully aligned with their teams and even fewer with their boards. Yes. What's going on here? I think they see, interesting enough, in the free text, they came and said their day biggest role is to create cohesion in their leadership team. So they get it, of course. If you change is hard, right? Transformation is even harder. So they understand that they have to mobilize and inspire and raise the collective ambition of their teams and their organization. But honestly, that's what they're saying through relational, through lack of relational or weaker relational capabilities, you just can't reach people as much. That is what is going on. It takes a lot of true humility and openness and curiosity to listen, right? To truly, truly listen and to listen, not less to fix, but more to really learn. Try to understand what's that person's motivation and priorities. So are you saying that they are not willing to learn and listen to their boards? That's a different story. (laughs) That's a different story. See, that board thing is, of course, board has a, you have to ask yourself, what is the role of a board, right? If the role of a board is purely governance and controlling, and there's no truly productive, what I call debate, productive discussions, even honest feedback to the CEO, right? Obviously, that gets very difficult, right? So there's another issue that we see, and that also a lot of the CEOs came back in the study with that, that a lot of boards, they themselves need to go on a dual journey, right? So as the world changes and becomes more complex, the boards need to really understand what it takes nowadays, what needs to be done, less ticking boxes, Mm, more understanding and, you know, growing with the business or ahead of even of a business. That is worrying, actually, Sabina. That's very worrying. When uh, there was one CEO that said, my board is like five plus years behind the curve. No, but it aligns, Kati, with what we are seeing in the board evaluations, that the boards are not aligned fully with the strategic ambitions Mm -hmm. and that the capabilities, the competencies they have on the board are also not necessarily aligned in terms of their composition of what needs to happen. But that's then even more worrying when I combine this now with your findings that also the CEOs don't feel aligned with their boards. Do you have any insights what key challenges they face in developing a more successful relationship with the board? Did they point to anything? I think it was a lot about boards, not what we just talked about, not really being on track with the developments, Mm -hmm. the trends in the world. Yeah, We all know. I mean, by the way, as we were doing this study, this is we published in September. The study was live early this year. Even the past eight, nine months, just think about all the requirements for ESG. This is real. Yeah. And what is happening is that a lot of the boards are seeing it more as a formal thing to do. Oh, we got to do something about this rather than how is this truly embedded in the purpose of the company and the strategy of the company? 
this is what I call alignment. It's not like we always have to agree together. I mean, you know, mm-hmm. yeah, it's, it's, there's nothing wrong with that. But to be aligned about we need the fact that these trends are coming, there is disruption, ESG for me, all the requirements of ESG is causing massive disruption, right? In the workforce, in technologies, in uh, presence in different areas and business models. This is amazing. As a CEO and the board, if we don't align on that and that our strategy needs to really reflect that and, of course, agree that we still need to create shareholder value, that gets a, to be an issue, you know. Look at it from the other side, the more positive side. Yeah. Do we have any indications what successful CEOs who enjoy a productive relationship with their boards, what do they do differently? That's really nice that you're asking that because I've seen that. <laughs> It really does happen. First of all, I think they have a relationship that is less about, it's honest, transparent, you know, supportive from board side. And the CEO is very transparent, communicative, proactive, listens very well. You know, one of the biggest thing, and I would really like CEOs to think about this because I see this way too often, unfortunately, CEOs need to be stopped being gatekeepers for their management mm. team leaders to have relationship with the board. You see, there is a huge opportunity here. Best boards have actually, every senior executive has a mentor in the board of directors that, you know, uh, over time is listening. It's about growing also senior leaders. So the CEOs are helping their people to also grow mm. and building. And, and with that, they're being transparent towards the board, right? So the board understands in more details what is happening in the business by having more contact also to the other senior leaders, not only the typical presentations that we hear about, right? They come in, present for half an hour, have some Q&A. But I can see, you know, if they feel not aligned and in order to be transparent, you need to have trust, Absolutely. trust in each other. So any good tips, anything you've seen, what needs to happen to develop this trust so that as a result, actually, transparency can happen? Absolutely. I think, by the way, we haven't talked about the role of the chair, which is major, massive. That person influences a lot the relationship of the CEO with the board and obviously the relationship of the chair with the CEO, it starts there, right? That can be very destructive and can be wonderful. I've seen a lot of great relationships between CEOs and chairs and therefore also the board. And if there's anything wrong in anything in the board between CEO and the board, the chair really intervenes and fixes that. Mm -hmm. I think to build that trust is, first of all, by getting to know each other, right? Yeah, We're human beings. Everybody has their motivations, their history, where do they come from? Not, I mean, I don't only mean geographically, I'm talking about their mindset, where, yeah. they, where, where they socialize, you know, they really have to have this understanding for each other. It's not about, we're not here talking about liking each other. You see what I mean? It's about um, professional trust. Yeah. And empathy is always a good thing to have. Anyhow. So many of our listeners, we know, are non-executive directors. Mm -hmm. What could they do to help their CEOs establish a more productive relationship with the board? I think, first of all, be very aware of not only what they hear and they see. I mean, that's their job, numbers, strategies the, at the rational level, but also see behaviors, look at signs. Is somebody listening? Is a CEO listening? Is a CEO receptive? Are they communicating enough? And I think as a board director on a board, if you watch for these things, if you are aware of those things, and then be honest, and through some channel, either directly or through the chair, to really provide feedback and guidance, and take responsibility also, you know, sometimes uh, I think one would think, oh, that the chair will do that, right? But if you observe behaviors, observe things from the CEO, or you have suggestions, just reach out and just be honest, you know, and do it in a constructive and empathetic way. You know, it's about really helping the person and not 
you know, that there's one major thing between board and CEO. The board needs to be clear about governance is one thing. That's professional governance. The other thing is really being supportive of the management, right? Mm -hmm. If we have trust in them, right? If there is trust, it's really about making them better. But it's not always agreeing with everything they're doing. But really, the baseline should be wanting to help, wanting to coach, wanting to provide support, right? So we could, of course, talk for hours, but sadly, we have to come uh, to an end. What are the top three things our listeners should take away from this podcast? First of all, I would say it starts with the CEOs, right? I think there is really a truly a need for CEOs to be self-aware and work on their inner selves. And this is not about esoteric stuff, right? They need to do this to remain self-aware and be clear about where they are in their environment. So the self-awareness, the starting with themselves, looking inwards and self-reflecting and personal development, because once you have found out what is going on, there is, of course, uh, the need to continue to do that. I think that is a really major thing. It takes time. This doesn't go very quickly. Because if you do that, then you know how relational you are, what part of your relational capacity you need to work on, and how you can take the organization to be more adaptive, more agile. Okay. Uh, the second thing is, I think both the CEOs and the boards need to really realize there is a huge opportunity and increasingly a necessity for business to take responsibility for prosperity for many and mm -hmm. not only their own businesses. I think this is increasingly required of them. The impact that businesses have on business and environment is huge in, in the society. So and I think CEOs can be a wonderful and need to be wonderful architects of this prosperity for the many. And the third thing is that this, I would really wish the boards to build similar type of a, go on a similar type of dual journey like the CEOs, right? Fantastic. Big, big thanks, Kati. Huge thank you for contributing to the Better Boards podcast thank series. Thank you. Hopefully it was helpful. Good luck. Bye-bye. How can we help you and your board? We at Better Boards are always delighted to hear from you. You can best reach us at info at better-boards.com. Thank you for listening. Mm -hmm.